The Snake People, as a species, are a post-human race first introduced in C.M. Kozeman's 2006 book All Tomorrows. The Snake People, like all other in-universe future humans, are a result of genetic engineering by the maniacal alien race known as the Q, galactic nomads who would travel between galaxies and genetically modify all life forms that they came across. The Snake People began their lives as Star People, who, after a catastrophic encounter with the Q, were captured, imprisoned, and genetically modified. The end result of this genetic meddling on this particular world was the Worms. The Worms are the first of the post-human species that we meet in the book. Perhaps one of the more bizarre-looking species of future human, they have been given, as the name would suggest, a worm-like appearance, and are described as being around the same length as a traditional human's arm. Their hands and feet have been retained, but modified for their new lives underground. The worm's human intelligence was removed, and they were reduced to the level of animals, who did very little except dig around looking for food and mating with each other. They had tiny eyes, and their ears and teeth were removed, along with half of their nervous system. Their physical form was simplified for a life underground. Quite why the Q had decided to do this, in particular, to the Star People is unknown. The worms needed to live underground, as it would seem that the Q not only modified their physical bodies, but they also modified the atmosphere of their planet. This new world revolved around a scorching sun, and with the book mentioning that this had been made worse by Q intervention, it can be assumed that the Q, by way of their immense technological prowess, had the ability to either change the atmospheric composition of planets, or, even more terrifyingly, they had the ability to change the overall mass of suns. Did the Q change the planet's atmosphere, or did they change the planet's sun? Both seem well within the capabilities of the Q. With the surface of their planet being comparable to an oven, and covered with the ruins of their former cities that baked in the extreme heat, the worms began their new lives underground. The worms, like all living things, then began to change and evolve over hundreds of thousands of years after the Q left. After a time, it seems that their planet cooled, perhaps due to its atmosphere growing thinner over time. The worm's descendants, a variety of serpent-like mammals, rose to the surface and evolved into snake-like grazers, swimmers, and also predators. They were able to fill every niche that had been vacant for countless millennia, and one lineage would evolve to become the most intelligent and sentient species on the planet, the Snake People. After over a million years, the Snake People came into being and had all the hallmarks of intelligent humans. They had their own unique cultures, architecture, language, and technology. Their physiology is how they were given their name. They had long serpentine bodies and elongated faces like the snakes on Old Earth. They seemed to have whiskers on the sides of their heads, betraying their mammalian biology. They have ears, re-evolved after being taken away by the Q all those hundreds of thousands of years ago. Their approximate size is not known, but with their ancestors, the worms, being around the size of a Homo sapiens arm, it can be assumed that the snake people would be slightly longer than this to accommodate a larger, more evolved brain, so an approximate length of four to five or perhaps even six feet long can be estimated. At the end of their snake-like bodies, they have a somewhat human-looking hand with four digits, which is prehensile and able to use and manipulate objects. Judging by the small feet of their ancestors, the worms, it would appear that this this four-fingered hand is the result of the worm's little feet fusing together over time. With this particular lineage being descended from tree climbers, it can be theorised that they would have used these hands at the ends of their bodies to hang from branches, upside down in a bat-like fashion, and also for climbing. It could be that they would hold onto a branch with their single hand and swing back to gain momentum, before letting go of the branch and catapulting themselves forward towards their target branch or prey item. The illustrated example shown in the book presents a civilized snake person wearing clothing, living inside of a building, and enjoying a book while smoking and listening to vibrational ground music. The snake people clearly enjoyed rest and relaxation as much as anyone else, and seemed to be at their happiest when indoors. Their evolutionary path, being descended from tree climbers, meant that they were much more comfortable in enclosed spaces, and the designs of their cities were testament to this fact. 
fact, their pastime of enjoying vibrational ground music could mean that they do not have eardrums like their human ancestors did, and instead have inner ear structures similar to Earth snakes which allows them to feel vibrations through their jaws, or in the highly evolved snake person's case, through their entire bodies. Or it could be that they have both eardrums and the necessary biological apparatus to hear through vibrations as well. A notable feature of the snake people's anatomy is their spirally coiled brains. Despite the unusual shape of the snake people's brains, it did not hinder them in any way, as they were an advanced and highly evolved species. The cities of the snake people were designed in such a way that accommodated their need to be enclosed within confined areas for safety, and were designed as narrow, twisting and winding tunnels and pipes, which would lead into what are described as windowless, hole-like buildings. Their settlements as a whole looked like giant balls of glass, metal, plastic and cloth, and were wound tightly like enormous balls of yarn, and would be impossible for anything other than a snake person or other serpentine creature to move around in. As bizarre as their lifestyle may seem to us, it was perfectly normal to them, and our lifestyle of walking around in the open and having windows in our houses would seem like absolute madness to them. They had achieved human-like intelligence once again after being reduced to the level of beasts by the queue, and lived lives filled with all the usual human emotions, sadness, joy, anger. They were capable of them all. They read and wrote books, philosophized, created beautiful works of vibrational music, and progressed into an advanced civilization, and eventually they would, along with many of their post-human cousins on distant worlds, become members of the Second Galactic Empire. The members of this empire all inhabited planets too far from one another to actually meet in person, but they would communicate and exchange technological information and innovations via radio waves, and forge an alliance with these other species which lasted for tens of millions of years. In the communications the Snake People undertook with the other members of the Empire, they covered every subject imaginable in their exchanges of information and experience, but the two main issues they held dear were political unification and galactic awareness. Having found the ruins of the Star People and the Q during their voyages across the heavens, and learning all about their ancestry and what took place during the Q invasion, nobody wanted a repeat of those events, and so they were all joined in unity and were always stood at the ready waiting for the next alien invasion to come along. The tragedy in all of this, however, lies in the fact that it was not an alien invasion that brought about the end of the Snake People and the rest of the Second Galactic. Galactic Empire, but an invasion from another post-human species. The Gravital were a race of machines, formerly Q-created ruin haunters who had modified themselves genetically and developed a way to install their minds into mechanical forms after their sun expanded and made life as an organic unbearable. This race had always shunned the Second Galactic Empire and all other future human species, believing themselves to be the true heirs to the Star People. After several million years, the Gravital set about committing the worst genocide the galaxy had ever seen, and went about all future human planets annihilating the life forms who inhabited them. Along with the Satyriacs, the Tall Breeders, and the Terro Sapiens, among others, the Snake People were wiped out during the Gravital invasion. The species was now sadly extinct, but this extinction-level event was not an unusual occurrence within the galaxy. The Snake People had made great advances, had become a Type 3 civilization, and had lived lives just as human as the ones we live now. After all that they had done, all that they had accomplished, the Snake People's time was over, and had come to its natural conclusion. Thank you for watching my video on the Snake People. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. This has been Beware the Q, and I'll see you in the next video.